let's bl- uh let's blast off Trump's uh most unhinged hinged uh moments from the weekend. Why are you catching strays on TikTok? Wait, what? I'm not catching strays on TikTok. People are probably searching it because I reacted to it. Uh and and a lot of people enjoyed my reaction to it. I actually saw this TikTok on my for you page and I looked through the comments and people were talking about how fun it was watching it with me but yeah no i don't catch i don't catch that many you catch trades on every platform man shut up chat you guys are my biggest haters i swear to god no tiktok has been actually much much better tiktok has been much much better to me than all of the other platforms i'm gonna be honest with you um easy the best stream of the year and you cook lot on the trash talk a little too hard that was great okay i didn't even actually charges dismissed trump finally wins wait what well not so fast. Yes, obviously I am not in my normal legal eagle office. Uh, I'm actually in Southern Utah because I'm participating in the off-road games uh, that I'm definitely going to lose because I'm the only one that doesn't have off-road experience. That's crazy. He does off-road games. Um, did Kaya enjoy her party yesterday? She, look, look at her. What do you think? What do you think? She definitely loved it. She's so cooked. And this morning, I took her to the gym, and she also played in the gym for hours today as well. Anyway, Trump's most unhinged moments from the weekend. Putin wins election. Totally fair. Um, Don Lemon. Don Lemon v. Elon. And more news get in now. Okay. Let's do it. I'm a... I'm chilling. I still can't believe she cheated right in front of her man. She's cold-blooded. Yeah, she she cooked. Listen, I told you, she is my thought daughter. Okay? I chose the thought daughter over the gay son. And that's what's going on. The king is dead? What do you mean? <clears throat> I didn't know Kai had a boyfriend. Yeah, she does. And, and she was hanging out with her... Uh, she was hanging out with her, uh, with him today, this morning, like nothing happened. You know what I mean? They were still kissing, making out. Anyway, here it is. Um, dude, how good, how well trained is, uh, for those of you who are watching, how well trained is Huxley and Finley though? Like they're crazy. They're so good. I'm going to try to get Kaya to that level eventually. Playlist for later. Thank you, Thamasius, for the fat playlist, as always. The silent commands went crazy. Yeah, Finn is the most well-trained, for sure. Who made that picture? Bomb loves it. See? The watermark is right there. Kaya still doesn't even do fetch. So, is there going to be a virgin dog ball for Kaya and her friends? What does that mean? Promise my life on this video, the f- kids who hacked the CIA... Bro, that's crazy that you're sending me some fucking react videos like this early in the day. Debutante ball. I don't know what any of those words mean, man. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck that is. Okay. Uh, all right. Let's watch this. It's guaranteed. What is Northern Did you Alliance? See that? And now it sounds like you're a certified freak. I don't think so. I think I'm mostly like a normal guy. Certainly, I wouldn't be a, a certified freak seven days a week. I think at, at some point, you would just consider that, to be honest, to be kind of, like, exhausting. There's times you just want to, like, go... This guy, bro, he's just calling me out again. He's calling all of us. Northern Lions saying he's not a certified freak seven days a week hurts. It hurts. It hurts to hear from the bald, okay? It really does. It hits different. You say, are you a lazy parent? First of all, my dog is one years old, okay? And she's already, like, better than, a better trained than, like, 90% of dogs you've ever encountered. So, no. I'm actually a very good parent, and I'm in real aggro. Not as aggro as, as Michael is. Oh, oh, whoa, oh, whoa. That was crazy. What? 
Who trained her? I did. What the? I'm going to give 10 to Dipper because I knew what was about to happen. Switch. Get the Belgian Malinois. Lay down. Do the. Do the dead thing. Walk back. Walk back. Uh uh, come. <laughs> Walk back. Walk back. Oh my god. Okay. Walk back. 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 Do the dart. Do the, do the. Oh, you want to see him attack me? Okay, Huxley, walk back. Walk back. Walk back. This part is crazy. <laughs> so, um,. So there's something, there's something about it. I don't, we don't know why. We don't know why he's like that. You have to train maligators or they will be out of control. Yeah. Um, maligator. That's funny. Uh, we don't know what it is, but this dog is f***ing terrified of blow darts. And we don't know what the f how the f*** this happened. Like, because he's had this dog since, like, basically birth, right? So we have no idea why the blow dart thing freaks him out. Those are police dogs, right? I, these are police use these dogs. Yes. It's the frequency of the sound it makes. No, man. I think it's an epigenetic memory or something. Where the f are people using darts on Belgian Malinois? You know? How did you guys even find that out? I don't remember. But. He die in Nam on his past life. No, the police don't because the police can't train him. Okay, first of all, the police do have to train them. I like you can't. Here's the thing: you can't just have a dog be trained, and then you know it's for, uh, it, the dog is forever trained. You have to literally keep training a dog. Make no mistake. This is something that a lot of people don't understand. That's why, like. A lot of like uh, old ladies and whatever, like rich ladies will like go to the same trainer that uh, that I took Kaya to that, you know, Huxley uh, also got trained at. OK, and they think that like they think that like, all right, they went to a trainer. And then that's it. Uh, and then you don't ever have to reinforce that training. No, you have to train every day. I train Kaya every day. Anyway, they do train him to sniff out imaginary drugs. That's for sure. No, I'm talking about like other other uh, forms of training for the canine units. I'm sure they do a lot. Um, why did you clickbait with Foosley in the thumbnail on Fear End? We were doing a meme. I don't know if you guys figured it out or not. Stand with my boys, but instead of fear, they think it's time to play when I do the fast exhale. Okay, anyway. Having a hard day at work? Yeah. It's real tough, dude. You don't know how bad it is. You know what I mean? You don't know how bad it is. <sighs> Count your lucky stars. You get to work at the at the dick sucking factory every day. You know what I mean? <laughs> Shadows will be like, I just got off a 35 hour shift sucking cock at the dick sucking factory. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Okay. Shit is hard. Okay. My jaw is busted. Without me, society would not run, though. So I'd do it. I'd do it anyway. Uh, Bill Burr, Hassan Abihead. And he's like, George W. Bush. He goes, we had a $20 trillion surplus. And this guy started two non-ending wars and gave all the money to his friends and bankrupted us. You know, that's fucking way worse. But they all... These guys are so interesting. That's all I'm going to say. do their shit. Obama drone bombing weddings. Mm -hmm. Clinton was the guy who did that shit with the bank that made some jerk off. You know, working at a subway qualified to get a loan for a $400,000 house, which created that whole thing in 2008. You just keep going back. I think the only, like, the only, like, uh, like, truly, like, good person, like, human being, I feel, that's been president in my lifetime is Jimmy Carter. I mean, he's also bad policy-wise, too. You know, building houses for the homeless. He's out there swinging a hammer. Like, everybody else just goes off and buys land that sits on an aquifer because they're like, you know, like, I guess, betting on global warming. I guess, yeah. Is that what you do as a world leader? Um, and this guy's actually out there trying to help people. And um, it's funny. I remember when I was a kid, he was considered weak. 
Um, that was the thing. Um, because he didn't, you know, start a war with Iran. I remember that because of the <laughs> hostage thing. And he was able. Yeah, Carter was a piece of shit too. But like, I think, I think he's not wrong as far as like saying that he's like a good person IRL. Like, I do legitimately believe Jimmy Carter. I do legitimately believe that Jimmy Jimmy Carter, in spite of like all the awful shit that he did in office. Just like every other goddamn American president. Is still very much like, I think, like a good person in real life. Not that it fucking matters. Like, I think Obama is bad, dude. I, I think Obama is a bad dude through and through. You know what I mean? Careerist, doesn't care about anything, in it for the clout, wants to make fucking podcasts, wants to be loved. Trump obviously is Trump. I'm not even going to get into that, right? George W. Bush, monster, piece of shit, awful. Jimmy Carter did monstrous shit, but think about what he does after his presidency. Like, you don't do that your whole life. You're not fucking building houses for homeless people your whole life. If you, just just for the, the clout, I guess. Maybe he's just scared of the afterlife. And he's like worried about all of the sins that he committed when he was president. You know what I mean? Like all the top of the hour ad breaks that I serve at the top of the hour and then tell you if you no longer want to see those ads, like that's going to come catching up to me by the time, by the time I'm 99, if I make it out that, you know, if I make it alive that long, like all of that shit's going to haunt me for the rest of my life. Now, obviously you don't want it to haunt you right now. So you subscribe for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime, right? He's trying to carve an for his crimes. Barry Balls! Thank you for the five community to give this sub. allowing five people to no longer see the ads at the top of the hour. If you're, you know, you could get lucky with a gifted sub to chatters. Here's the three-minute ad break now. How often do you think of the Roman Empire? Not that often. Not at all, actually. Anyway, it's like you say, the system will continue to churn despite what cogs fit which gears. Carter may be a genuinely nice or good person, but the role he occupied necessitates doing evil acts. Yes. Me Canyon has done it again. Uh, what about? Uh, oh yeah, I I the Kazo one. Yeah, we'll watch this. Um, Jesus Christ, two point three million views in one day. That's crazy. How often do you think about the American Empire? Every goddamn day of my life. <laughs> Yo, she got hops, dude. Maya's got hops. Go to sleep. Seven days a week, you gotta unionize. That's true, that's hard work, man. It's not that hard, <laughs> I guess, but... I mean, there's worse jobs, don't get me wrong, but like... You know, sometimes you might be like, I'm actually sleepy. Oh, you're right, the shortcut, the sh Wow, dude, talking about fucking unionizing my fan base. This guy's out of control, dude. Someone's got to put an end to this. Me can you use clips of you on his new Papa Meat video too? Wait, really? What did he do a video on? Um, yeah, no union for the chat. Don't even fucking think about it. I will strike break, okay? You were an angry liberal, Lamau. Wait, what? What did he do? What? He made me a liberal. Fuck this guy, bro. I'm done with him. I'm unemployed. How do I unionize my favorite, uh, my my fellow lazy millennials? Good luck. Help! My cousin got a Malinois puppy recently, and they live in a motherfucking small studio, and they got a baby on the way, and they're first time dog owners. What do you mean, bro? What is that? Like, what what can I possibly do? You you typed it out. You typed it out. And I, and I legitimately want to understand what happened in your mind. Like, what can I possibly do? Do you want me to buy your cousin's child? Do you want me to get the puppy out of their hands? Like, what, what can I do? Do I buy them a house? Like, what, what is this? What do you want? I'm buying the child. Fuck it, dude. That's right. That's right, dude. Sorry. Sorry to your cousin. I bought the nephew. You are nephewless. Okay? You fucked up. 
You fucked up. I bought the kit. Teach the dog how to sit. <laughs> nope. Nope, shouldn't have shouldn't have wrote that in the chat, dude. Real monkey's paw situation. The monkey's paw curls. Now I bought your nephew. Okay. <laughs> Kaya needs a new chew toy. What? That watch this show. If they've learned anything, it's probably how to respect and how to have a long-term healthy relationship with a woman that you can call your wife and have a family with. How do you get a wife, Ethan? Because my thing is like you, you're. Bro, this is so funny. This question coming from them is funny because, like, I think he legitimately is asking. Okay? It's not even a joke. When he says, like, how do you get a wife, Ethan? I don't think he's, like, saying that as, like, a diss or owning him or anything. I think deep down inside, he literally is like, I don't know. Please tell me. Maybe I can find out. You're like, just, you're talking about the finish line. What about the race? Yeah. yeah. You understand? Like, of you course. have to get Are to either a you married? where you can even identify a female that's worthy of marriage, of having a family with, etc. And unfortunately, in today's day and age, it's not that simple anymore. So we live in a very complex world where it's difficult to identify women that are marriage material. And most aren't simply, that's just what it is. So you guys are, uh, if you guys' that? method is so good, why aren't you married? Again, because men are the ones that decide if they want to get married. Choice. So, so you choose not to be married. Yes, yeah, because men are You're... the one. The, we're the gatekeepers to marriage and commitment. Women are the gatekeepers to sex. Right. And um, you're 34, right, Myron? Yes. And um, do you plan on getting married someday? Do you think it's important? Eventually, the nuclear family is the backbone to any thriving society. Oh, well, thank you for saying that about me. Good job, but a lot of guys don't have that ability to find a woman that's worthy. You don't have that ability. I don't have that ability. You're not married. That's by choice. Oh, but you, but no, the ability to find a woman, you clearly don't have that ability. So you use the sugar daddy websites as dating sites. Yes. Yeah, so we did a whole episode. And on then this. you complain about women being shallow. I never complain about women being you shallow. Say, you say it's hard to find a good woman because they're, they're motivated by material things and stuff. And yet you're seeking women specifically a certain type of woman, obviously that would be on a sugar daddy website. So it seems like you are confirming your biases by even going there to find women. What? Okay, so you Sorry, said- Sorry, well, I'll, I'll say it. Do you want me to say it again slower? The thing is, like, the thing is, like, you can go on a sugar daddy, like, website or whatever, and, like, women who do that, right, can still objectively be phenomenal partners. The thing is, they're not going to be a phenomenal partner to you if you're looking for like a, a, a you know a real partnership because sorry you're the one who is setting the motherfucking precedent that it is transactional that's it that's their job they're at work that's it like i and i say this as someone who literally i say this as someone who has dated sex workers right like as you guys know Sex workers, phenomenal partners. It's just, I didn't pay for it. You know what I mean? If you pay for it, then you set the expectation that, like, this is going to be a transactional relationship. That's the job. So, like, I'm sure there are plenty of wonderful people out there that would be phenomenal partners. It's just, you're not going to find it in that way. You're not going to find... A, a partner like a lifelong partner by paying them um what is this did you watch the majority report today report today it was very hassan heavy today both in tone and tenure no i did not watch it streaming fucked up roseanne some big people i talked to some important people yeah and yeah bro people say Honestly, people say streaming is not a hard job. Look at Roseanne, dude. She streamed one time. Look at her. No. Do I? I, I think I overlined my lip. Yeah, who did your... I mean, we're going to get back to yeah, but do, who did your makeup today specifically? I did, but... How, many, how much did you drink before you did your makeup? <laughs> <laughs> Here's the important thing to remember, Ma. Freedom Chat is an encrypted chat. They glaze you up big time? Nice.
Um, no shot Putin won. I bet my entire life savings he can do a bet online opposition candidate. I'm sorry, dude. GG's. Um, Sam Cedar called you a fundraising juggernaut. Holy shit, that's awesome. This community is the best, though. We are the goats. Uh, we are the goats, not just at fundraising, but just in, in uh, we're the goats at many things. Okay, fundraising being one of them. God, I love this community. I is literally fucking snoring so goddamn hard. Like, actually, let me, wait, hold on. Maybe you can hear it. I'm gonna. Okay. That's, uh, I, it's just like, you could probably hear it a little bit. I, I saw, um, a little bit. Uh, the interviews about how shitty copyright and fair use is brought to mind React Gate. Wait, what is this? I don't know what that is. Her social batteries out from streaming and also hanging out with other pubs. Anyway, um, welcome to the yeah, we'll talk about Putin in a little bit. We were story developing about mysterious death of Boeing whistleblower. Boeing whistleblower John Barnett was planning to drive home to Louisiana after his deposition on Friday, 3 30 before leaving before Boeing lawyers asked him to stay one more day to finish his testimony. His body was found on the morning of 3 9. That's crazy. All right. If you're retracted the four hours of news politics limit, please tell me now. Yeah, uh, I will. I, uh, I, oh, this morning, by the way, I spent, I spent the morning planning Australia. Okay. First Sydney, then Melbourne. Going to go on a couple of fucking podcasts. Yeah. Hopefully. Gonna do a little bit of fucking IRL content, yeah. Trying to do a fucking desktop stream, right? From 6 a.m. Australia time to fucking to fucking 10 a.m. Australia time, and then fucking moving away from the desktop streams to doing IRL streams, right? In both Sydney and fucking uh and in Melbourne, right? Doing going out fucking real bogan style, right? Going fucking crazy. With a couple VB long necks, yeah. Cracking back a couple VB long necks, yeah. Gonna be doing kangaroo fighting. Gonna be touching a bunch of kangaroos, right? Petting them. Petting a fucking sick cunts, right? Fighting them. Gonna go fucking give the old one two to the fucking emus, right? Fucking hell. It's so fortunate you don't talk like that. Yeah, a little bit of padding, a little bit of punching. Gonna be on your Xenogene shit? Yeah, gonna be on my fucking Xenogene sheet. My Xenogene sheet. Alright. Uh, hope he goes on cold one and ball pig leak. No. Don't forget to stop by the CIA gift shop. Honestly, just go there and express your condolences since their princess is missing. Um, so the Robert Irwin thing we're working on, we don't know because he lives in like bumfuck nowhere. <laughs> apparently apparently to get to him is a 10 hour journey okay because australia is pretty fucking large right it's like an entire continent for those of you who don't know australia is a fucking continent mate right it turns out not a lot of fucking high speed rail and nothing big places where a lot of people live and then a whole bunch of nothing in the outback, right? Not much in the fucking middle. Turns out, if you live in bumfuck nowhere, right? 10 hours, gonna take quite a fucking long time to get there. So I might not do it, but we'll see. I said I'd fly him out. Said I'd fly him out, put him in a nice fucking hotel, right? And then on top of that, showed him that we raise a lot of money for the fucking conservation efforts yeah for alveus right that we'll see if we could just fucking wine and dine him grease his fucking wheels a little bit give him some fucking money for the fucking conservations right yeah yeah austria is landlocked and small though Talking about fucking Stryer, mate. Not Str Austria, mate. Stryer. Australia is not a continent. It's a lie made up by Australians that make you think it's not just an island. 
because being on a continent sounds cooler than living on an island is definitely an it's definitely is definitely an island okay um bb long neck for breakfast yes yes Fucking. If you're a fucking fair dinkum fucking full-grown Aussie, this is what you'd have for breakfast, you fucking dog cunts. Yeah, I'm a fucking fair dinkum full-brown Aussie, mate. Fucking hell. That's why I fucking slammed the fucking tall boys. For a brekkie. Please don't stick to the four... Dude, sheltered rosebud. Oh my god, take a fucking hour off. You are so goddamn annoying. How are you this annoying? You're literally triggering yourself ahead of time. This mm. Ah! Every fucking day. Every fucking day with this fucking sick cunt. You ready your fucking mind, mate? You ready your fucking mind? Why are you fucking like this? I'm turning into a Bill Burr. Australian Bill Burr. Oh my God, I'm effing. Fuck me, mate. What the fuck is going on, mate? Fucking ruined my stream, mate. They're, I mean, it's, it's fucking hilarious that she or he or they, I don't know literally comes in here and is like are you actually gonna only do politics for four hours and then i'm like yes i'm gonna only do politics for four hours and then she goes please don't do politics only for four hours i love politics and it's like dude are you fucking serious like that's crazy it's like you just Ask the question specifically so you could create chaos in your own mind. Anyway, your accent is making the AWS switch to Aussie servers. <sighs> All right, let's let's fucking start with uh, Putin. Let's start with Putin addressing Moscow crowds after claiming landslide Russian election victory. Right, surprising for absolutely no one. But a fair and balanced election nonetheless. Today is verified live. We start in Russia. Vladimir Putin has addressed thousands of people in Moscow's Red Square after claiming a landslide election win. The rally <coughs> was held to mark the 10th anniversary of Russia's illegal annexation. See, he seems so happy. Chat, he seems so happy. Very obviously, very obviously he's, uh, you know, this was unexpected for him. You know what I mean? of Crimea was standing alongside three loyalist candidates who were allowed to run against him. President Putin said that hand in hand, Russians will move forward. Western countries have condemned the election as neither free nor fair. The US has just called it incredibly undemocratic. President Putin described the Donbass and other parts of Ukraine occupied by Russian forces as part of a new Russia. Let's have a listen. As for Novorossiya, Donbass, people, the people living there in those days of the Russian spring declared their desire to return to their native family. Their path back to homeland was much more difficult and tragic. But we did it. And that too was a great event in the history of our state. Now we are developing, we are marching together, we feel the fellowship. Just this morning... Why does Putin's skin look so good though? Bro, he's got... Yo, leak your fucking routine, King. Come on. Come on. Leak it. It's bullshit. You're actually not wrong. Leak the fucking skincare routine. The girlies need to know, okay? The girlies that want to liberate Donbass need to know what your fucking skincare is, okay? Vampire facials? I was told that the railway... He's also in 
unimaginably wealthy. So I, I think that probably helps. From so, Rostov to Donetsk to and Mariupol and Berdyansk has been restored. We will continue this work and soon railway carriages will move all the way to Sevastopol, offering another alternative road to an alternative. Dude, I can't pay attention. God damn it. You guys are so fucking annoying. With the fucking skincare thing. Now I can't even hear what he's saying. I'm literally looking at how he only has brow lines at this fucking age. He's like 72 years old. It's really messed up. You broke me. Now I can't even listen to him talk about why it's totally sick that like he's annexed uh, Ukrainian land. <laughs> I can't even fucking pay attention now. I'm locked in on the skincare shit. How did he do it? It's, I guess, makeup, right? I watched the Mariupol documentary last night. It was really good and very insightful. Alternative to the Crimean Bridge. So together, arm in arm, we will go forward. And this, this action, not words, that is what makes us really stronger. I doubt he does surgery. For people saying surgery, no shot that man fucking... He is a freak, dude. You're out of your mind if you think he's, like, going under anesthesia just to get a fucking facelift or whatever. No shot. He doesn't trust nobody. No way. Maybe Botox, but even then, I don't think... Micro-Botox is kind of obvious. Probably micro-Botox. I don't really know. He, he did, um... What do they call it? A preventative Botox. <laughs> Bro's aging like a millennial? Yeah. Russian cosmetic injectables are next level. Have you seen Russian women? Um, he trains doctors from the crib with his money to make sure they're 100% loyal. I could see that. Maybe he's just got untapped adrenochrome, dude. Like Russian baby adrenochrome is like way different. You know what I mean? Well, that was Vladimir Putin in the last hour. Now, Ben Noble is an associate fellow for the Russia and Eurasia program at Chatham House. He told me why this election was so important for Vladimir Putin. <laughs> the Kremlin. I thought I thought he was going to say Putin said it. Putin was like, this is most important election of lifetime. <laughs> I know I say that last election, but this election most important election of lifetime okay we cannot let the other guys win <laughs> please vote for me i am lesser evil <laughs> i don't know who would be more evil in that situation but uh, he'll just say it anyway will definitely point to the official result as proof that Putin is actively and enthusiastically supported by the vast majority of the population. But the picture is much more complex than that. Yes, there are some people who are ardent supporters of Putin, but there are also those that detest him. And more importantly, there's a large group in the middle with ambivalent feelings towards Putin. And the Kremlin has made sure that it presents to that large middle group. Putin is the leader without alternative. So many people will have gone to the polls because of that. If not Putin, then who else? But also, we shouldn't forget the extraordinary propaganda in the country. And as I say, the Kremlin will demonstrate that Putin is... Like, I think it's Putin's situation is very similar to Turkey, but even worse. And it, this is like, because Turkey is a NATO nation, Americans don't cover it in the same way. Whereas, like, Russia is a foreign adversary, so Americans do cover it very aggressively. But the reality is, like, he's popular. Okay? That's it. Like, and, and obviously he's very unpopular for certain demographics, right? And it's perfectly understandable. But I would go so far as say Putin's probably more popular than fucking Erdogan is in Turkey. And Erdogan has always got that 51% locked in. Okay? Now, Russian elections are a little different because there is no real alternative, right? Like, because <laughs> you will get thrown out of a building or die under mysterious circumstances, which he actually mentioned, which I think is crazy. Right? Um, you know, you just die. Whereas in Turkey, you don't just die. You get ritualistically humiliated. You have no access to the media. You can barely fucking put together a coalition. Um, and, and, you know, eke out like 48% of the vote. 
But um, overall, like, it's cope to say that he's not popular. You know what I mean? It, it's it's a sad reality for a lot of these places. There's a lot of fucking, there's a lot of old people, and there's a lot of reactionary people in Russia that fucking love his shit. Just like there's a lot of old people and a lot of reactionary people in Turkey that love Recep Tayyip Erdogan. And we always, like, every election cycle, we just, like, fucking lose our minds. And we're like, what the fuck is going on? What is going on? How is this possible? Like, how, how did this motherfucker win 51% again and again and again? Now, that's different, though. That's different. Recep Tayyip Erdogan is different. Because Turkish elections are free. They're not fair. Russian elections are neither free nor fair. Does that make sense? Putin is not 87% popular, but I'd go so far as to say he's probably like, you know, 60 to 70% popular, like with the country, among the voters. Like, that's not that big of a stretch, in my opinion. A lot of hogs, fellas, ladies, dempers, a lot of hogs. They respond to the strong leader shit. They do. Shit ton of hogs. Hogs are universal. For those of you who don't understand, hogs are universal. Who knows what the real number is? You aren't allowed to criticize at all. Are you are you making a um a fucking uh a joke about the <laughs> Mr. Bonarelli? Now it doesn't really matter because there's no real opposition. It, because like I mentioned, real opposition gets pee pee poofed, okay? Which is, you know. Real aggro. Run a Putin popularity poll in the chat. Come to Brazil. We are literally about to jail our shitty former president like a real country. I know. Brazil is so sick, dude. It's so awesome. Oh, God. Lula is, ki Lula is killing it, dude. Um. Anyway. What will happen after Putin dies? Bedlam. Chaos. Real bad. Um, so Putin's victory matches the independent third party approval ratings. If Putin, which absolutely is not democratic, is more popular than Biden, what does that say about our democracy? I don't think you understand. I think that says more about like that is more of a problem with capitalism and democracy being completely incompatible concepts in general. A real, a real question should be fucking the Chinese Communist Party and their consistent approval ratings by Western polling in comparison to like the American government's approval ratings. One is a democracy. The other is like a single party structure where there is localized democracy, but most of the, uh, most of the dictation comes from top down. The reality of the matter is that if you have, if you have theoretical democracy, but it's a capitalist one, it's just not going to fucking, it's just not going to be a real democracy at all. Um, comparing a single party structure to a two party structure. Well, the Chinese government is a single party structure. The American government is a two party structure that creates, which is the most American, most capitalist thing uh, ever. The fallacy of like the false notion of choice. That's the that's the major difference. Because ultimately it is still uniparty. It's still uniparty in the sense that, like, uh, you know, look at the uh Democratic Party pushing for incredibly right wing immigration policies right now. Right? My statement is, my belief is we should have. We should have a parliamentary structure and we should have real democracy, but you cannot have a real democracy under capitalism. And what a lot of people start rec uh, reckoning with, and they will recognize this more and more, especially with Chinese global uh, economic intervention, is that you can't really outcompete China because they command their entire economy. 
Real democracy is completely incompatible with capitalism. So we will arrive at the same exact fucking issue that we did 100 years ago. Which is, what do we prefer? How do we manage this? How do we, how do we uh, continue the capitalism, but also simultaneously organize so that we can like compete against the, uh, uh, you know, Chinese intervention, for example? Well, we know how. History has shown us how. It's called fascism. And uh, we're at that proto-fascist stage right now. I believe most people don't want democracy. They just want to be in charge, so they hide behind democracy while it's convenient. <sighs> Maybe. I agree. I use democracy in quotes. Whenever workplace a dictatorship, it's definitely hard to say we live in a democracy. Like, there are definitely marginal differences, right? There are definitely marginal differences between uh, the, the democratic process uh, or marginal differences between the two parties in the United States of America. But a lot of those, um, a lot of those differences bear themselves out uh, in, I, I, or a lot of those, like, marginal differences don't even have to fucking exist. It's, like, perfectly manufactured and in an effort to make it seem like there are major differences. What is this? Chinese guy absolutely destroys a reporter from the UK? Are you an ally? Are you a, th are you a threat? How would you regard your relationship with Britain? First of all, between China and Britain from the... Ch <laughs> Chinese guy. That's crazy. Isn't this guy literally like, uh, like the fucking foreign minister or some shit? <laughs> this is not just some Chinese guy, bro. That's so funny. Oh, that's hilarious. It's just some guy. <laughs> just some random Chinese guy in a suit. Just sitting there. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Chinese perspective. Britain is not a rival. It's not a competitor. It is not an enemy. It's not an adversary. Britain is just an important country to get along with in peace and in friendship and for mutual benefit. Now, how oh. Britain looks at China, it's up to the British government and people to decide. But I think it will be completely misguided for Britain to view China as an enemy or adversary or a competitor. What do China and Britain compete with? China is the largest manufacturer of automobiles competing. Yeah, he said, he said, he said, you blew a 13 colony lead. You're fucking washed. Okay, take the L. China on top, China number one, Britain not even number two, maybe number 10, okay? Your empire too small. Your bitches are not bad. You literally eat mushy peas. What the fuck is that? Chinese food infinitely better. Permanent first world genocide. <laughs> Fuck you. With Britain? No. China is the largest exporter of EV cars and will lead the whole world in EV production. Is Britain a competitor? No. China will be the biggest and most important producer and R&D in terms of semiconductor in no time. Does that mean that China competes with Britain? No. China will be the leading nation in AI revolution. Is Britain a competitor? No. So I think British government should not overestimate its impact on the global scene and view Britain as a rival of China. China is not. China is a fact. China is a mega trend for Britain to live with and get along with. Let's make peace rather than agitating for war. Goddamn. He really fucking cooked his ass, dude. China, a tiger who survives. Yeah, except the difference is like when when Indian Twitter goes India a lion too, sir. When talking about like you know uh, uh, the the Israeli genocide of Palestinians, it's funny when China is like no, actually like here is what is actually going on in the global economy. It's just a factually accurate statement. That's the difference. It's a it, it's a it's an objective assessment of facts. Scary stuff. Yeah, dude, I know. Uh, Chinese electric vehicles flooding the market is fucking terrifying. Okay, I am so scared, dude. That's why. <laughs> 
Like, what do you mean scary? Like, people that have been purchasing Chinese manufactured products their entire lives, like from birth to death, you have only, you have the overwhelming majority of, of products that you have consumed have in some way, shape, or form touched the Chinese factory floor, and now you're fucking terrified of it? Like, what do you mean? Like, what do you... You are talking to me either on your fucking iPhone or either on your computer. Where the fuck do you think the parts were manufactured on either of those things? It's not scary. It, you've been conditioned into thinking it is scary. Okay? I love you chatters. Please open up your mind a little bit. You have been conditioned into thinking this is a scary concept. Except, why is it scary? It's been happening your whole fucking life. Huh. Like, it wasn't scary in the 90s because China not a lion, okay? It's scary now because... Turns out we can't just like enslave the Chinese. Turns out they also are human beings. Turns out they have a pretty fucking big ass blossoming economy with, uh, you know, and they have autonomy. That's what's scary. And the reality is if you think like it's any different in Indonesia or any number of different like places that we exploit regularly in the global north, you're wrong. The real reason why it's scary is because, well, the slaves now own the factories, okay? That's the fucking reason why it's scary. And they have a whole ass country. It's a actually good take, too, by the way, with, the, with respect to, like, banning EVs and stuff, because we're going to talk about Donald Trump talking about that over the weekend as well. He's like, 100% tariffs. 100% tariffs on Chinese EVs uh, is what he was talking about. So we'll do that. Ford sees colossal competitive threat in low-cost Chinese EVs. Yeah, I mean, it is real. This is a real issue. This is a real issue for Ford. It's a real issue for the UAW. Like that part, that aspect of it is 100% correct. Anyway. Um, we'll get to that in a little bit, though. Let's uh, finish this Russia shit. It's still at the center of politics and therefore is going to be around for many years to come. So what do you expect over the next six years? I think we're going to see an even more emboldened Putin. This Who do I support? UAW versus cheap uh, Chinese EV? Uh, UAW, 100%. Dude, guys, I am in favor of letting China do its own fucking thing leave it alone i'm also in favor of american labor do you understand i literally do not utilize chinese factories when doing my own merchandise which is coming out this week by the way be on the lookout the next line is coming out okay what do i do i use american labor union shops for my merchandise why do I do it? Because I put my money where my motherfucking mouth is. Okay? I am a supporter of unionized labor in the United States of America. As far as our foreign policy goes, yeah, I don't think we should try to fuck their bag up. I don't think we should try to destroy them. I don't think we should be interfering consistently in their affairs. Right? This motherfucker never gives us a heads up, I swear to God. I just gave you the heads up. <clears throat> what the fuck do you need a heads up for? Uh, money, probably. People want to make sure that they have enough saved up so they can buy the merch. This is a man who will now have six more years in power, and then, because of change... Especially because it sells out. That's why I don't usually give a heads up. Because it sells out so quick that, like, I feel like if I give a heads up, then it's going to sell out even faster. You know what I mean? 
messages that he introduced to the Constitution in 2020, he can run again in 2030 to stay in power until 2036, at which stage he will be 83. I think we're likely to see more domestic repression, more use of coercion, the Kremlin taking unpopular decisions that it didn't want to in the lead up to the election, where it wanted to present a Russia that was confident and rosy in the state providing support to people. So it's going to be an even uglier Russia domestically, but also emboldened when it comes to the ongoing war against Ukraine. You talk about making unpopular decisions. I mean, there have been huge losses in this war for Russia, upwards of 300,000 people. Uh, given uh, he has uh, said what he said about uh, the war and what lies ahead, does it give him scope also to implement full mobilization there in Russia? That is certainly the question that many people are grappling with. But I think it's not certain that Putin will, now that he has been re-elected, call a full mobilization. And the reason is because when they called the partial mobilization in September 2022, it was so deeply unpopular, Putin's own approval ratings took a hit that the Kremlin just probably won't want to do that. Of course, it's difficult to predict at this stage. But I think it's more likely that the Kremlin will find uh, steps, it will take steps in order to find new manpower to feed the voracious appetite of the war machine in Russia through things that go under the radar. So recruiting people in different ways without the big policy announcement that could be deeply unpopular of a full mobilization. Putin calls US undemocratic and addresses Navalny death after a Russian election win. This is what I was talking about earlier where he's just fucking flexing. He's flexing on his haters and he's smoking on the uh, Navalny pack by openly recognizing it, talking about it, and being like, oh, it just life happens. Some people just die in prison, you know? It's crazy. Uh, very sad that we were in the process of deal and, uh, you know, life happened. It's like death happened. <laughs> he didn't kill him? Come on, dude. Come on, dude. Muslim world needs a Putin. He didn't kill him. Heart Putin, you're so dumb, bro. <laughs> yeah, the Muslim world needs a Putin. Yeah, remember last time the Muslim world had a Putin? As in Putin in Chechnya? <laughs> yeah, that went really well. He did really well there to the Muslims. He did really well by the Mus uh, Muslims there. So fucking dumb. My person with the vote yesterday, everyone, and I stayed for an hour and watched people vote. Almost 70% voted against fucking Putin as well as everyone said they voted for Dovanko of his hope he wins. And after election, this motherfucker said Putin should continue the Ukraine war. <laughs> yeah, because they're all fucking fake. The one dude that wasn't even a good dude that at least was like, okay, the 99% Hitler to Vladimir Putin's 100% Hitler was killed, okay? Like, literally. Every other guy is his guy. What the fuck? You know my opinion regarding whether our elections are democratic or not. I believe they are democratic. <laughs> and on the contrary, in some... And on the contrary, in some countries such as yours, the Пару, US. You can consider the use of administrative, administrative resources to attack one of the presidential uh, candidates, including courts. Oh, dude, he's doing the fucking Brandon is actually... Uh, how can there be a democracy when Brandon is actually fucking using the courts to attack Trump? Prigozhin was on a Boeing 737, buddy, but keep spreading that Zell Disney as of Ganda, as of Aganda. Okay, no one who's pushing Z is that creative, okay? I know you're, I know you're uh, memeing M. Hud as, as like a Z pusher, but literally not a single Z pusher I've ever encountered is like this funny to be able to come up with a, with a statement like that. Hassan, really clueless how dog shit Russia is with Putin. Navalny would be a million percent better. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Brother, Russia is so goddamn close in like, it, Russia is such a perfect analog.
for Turkey, both in the authoritarian strongmen leading. I know I didn't love the coalition against Recep Tayyip Erdogan, but I certainly was advocating for him. I get it. Okay, that's why I said Navalny would be the 99% Hitler to Putin's 100% Hitler. Putler. I didn't say Putin is good. I did say Navalny would be better than Putin. Anyway. Why, why you don't speak about the genocide Israel's doing in the support of U.S.? Putin is not the problema. Yes, famously, I never talk about genocide Israel's doing. Number one defender of Israel here. Hello. Kok Dilla, Kok de Bezavut, what's up? My name is Hassan. It's a fake Muslim name I use to throw you off because I love Israel. That's because they're all like that has guy. Dude can't even remember which race he claims to be. <laughs> That's just normal Balkan behavior, though. Um, Navalny, the neo-Nazi better. Are you kidding me? Oh, God, this is the worst liberal take you got. Dude, come on, 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 come on. I know. I know he was a, he was a neo-Nazi. Okay, I know. It is ridiculous to act like Vladimir Putin is doing anything good. Like, there is no, it's just, it's so fucking stupid. <sighs> What's better, neo or Nazi? Yeah, it's just like, no, by the way, not a single person is like voting for Navalny because they're like, I, I mean, I'm sure there was some neo-Nazis or whatever, but like, I hope you guys understand. This is a, if there was a race between Navalny and fucking Vladimir Putin, it would be a race between Two CIA adjacent people, okay? Two capitalist, incredibly right wing, ultra nationalist, CIA adjacent motherfuckers duking it out with one another. What are you talking about? Like, how do you think Putin came to power? It's so stupid. This argument is so dumb. Navalny would have broken up Russia and there'd be a civil war and millions dead Russia due to his racism. So you're wrong on that. Voting for Navalny is voting against Putin. That's all. Exactly. It's one of those things where it's like people know that it's not going to work. It's not going to happen. Nobody ain't nobody's like thinking that Navalny's going to win. It's more so to be like, this is the only thing. This is the only thing I can vote against. Stop saying you dislike Putin and say that you really mean you hate multipolarity. Yes. I hate multipolarity. That's why everyone always says I'm sucking Xi Jinping's cock famously and, and say that I'm an asset for the state of China because I, yeah, Navalny is the Gulen of Russia. Yeah, I, I think that's a relatively fair assessment. I don't think that's like wrong. That's why I said Vladimir Putin is still popular as a figure ultimately. I do not think Vladimir Putin is a good guy. Just like I don't think Recep Tayyip Erdogan is a good guy. The people of Russia deserve better leadership. They do not have better leadership. So at the moment, what they had was a protest vote against Vladimir Putin. That protest vote against Vladimir Putin was killed. These are all, in my opinion, I mean, some of this is obviously assessments that I'm making that uh, we don't know the full uh, reality of, but I think it's a relatively educated take to, you know, assume that he was killed. Oh. A protest vote that was a fucking CIA puppet, Lamau. I don't think you understand. Vladimir, what do you think Vladimir Putin's background is? Like, I don't know where this, where, where this notion comes from that, like, you think Vladimir Putin is somehow, like, not a capitalist and, and also not, like, uh, an intelligence asset from the jump. The only difference is he is positioned against the United States. That's it. On certain issues. The U.S. supported a coup in Ukraine that threw out the Democratic... Oh, my God. Okay. To attack one presidential. We have no preference for any of the candidates for the president of the United States of America. We will work with anyone who voters, the, voters trust. 
But the use of administrative resources of the judicial system, well, it has simply become disgrace to the whole world for the United States. I have every reason to believe that today we do not observe any democracy in your country, at least during the election processes. In some Western countries, including the USA. Putin is a former KGB who compares him to the fucking Peter the Great. Can Chappy Rational not act like he's some hero just because the U.S. West isn't a fan of him? I don't know if there's anyone who's, like, unironically pushing Z. I feel like I make fun of them so much that, like, I mean, maybe there are some people who, like, think he's, like, secretly a, a communist. No, my favorite is when people say that, like, the real leadership, the real communism is the Russian Communist Party as though they are not controlled opposition, completely controlled by Vladimir Putin. Like, that's another funny one. I think ultimately Putin, just like every other fucking country on the planet, has the capacity to not do evil and chooses to do evil shit regardless for capitalist interest, for personal interest. And uh, especially in the process of like uh, a continued invasion with death and destruction that befalls the Ukrainian population. It's fucking ridiculous objectively to say that he is a good dude in any meaningful capacity because he's not. Okay? He's uh, objectively bad when it comes to domestic treatment uh, of Russian citizens. And he's objectively bad when it comes to his foreign policy. Uh, it, it's ridiculous. Pushing Z is like the people that defend Putin. Z is, uh, is on the side of the tanks uh, that invaded Ukraine. It means, like, uh, it's, it's just the direction, I think, right? Uh, the direction of the invasion. Like, it, it signified where the uh, tanks were going. Like, where the... Zaplod. Yeah. Zaplod! I don't push Z, I push P, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, so... Let's not pretend like Ukraine is not corrupt as hell. Yes, of, of course. I've talked about how corrupt Ukraine is many, many times over, which is part of the reason why people say I'm a Vladimir Putin defender. Except it doesn't matter. Your corruption, it does not fucking matter when you're being invaded. Okay? Remember this guy, the Z guy? Nothing is more convincing that Russia's elections are fair and balanced. They're featuring an American accused of running a sex cult that exploited people with addiction to satisfy a spanking fetish on national television, praising it. Oh, dude, isn't this guy like a... Isn't this guy like a, like a fucking... Like a crazy... Uh, uh, what the fuck is this guy? He's like a commie, isn't he? But... Uh, oh, Ma Caleb Malpin. He's like Nazbal. He's not even a commie. I think he's like... Or a Larishite, maybe. Yeah, I don't fucking know. I don't know. I don't care. These guys are insane. He's the spanky tanky. Yeah, that makes so much sense. God. You should thank the Lord every day of your fucking life that this is one of the only normal, like, very anti-imperialist communities literally anywhere. Okay? Like, think about that. Think about the fucking gold mine that you're sitting on. That, like, you have a community of people who are socialist and socialist adjacent, okay, that care about workers' rights, that will even cover electoralist uh, the politics in the United States of America from a objectively leftist position, and more importantly than all those other things, definitely anti-imperialist, and not a fucking Revcom, not a Larishite, not a not a Trotskyist community like none of these none of these like weird adjacent things that turn into that almost always turn into like uh, some kind of fucking weirdo cult. Think about that. Think about how lucky you are that the only inconvenience is the three minute ad break at the top of the fucking hour. Many of you don't even know what any of these adjacent things are because you haven't spent enough time in like leftist circles or left book. Or even organizing or attending protests, I guess, where you see the smelly guys, okay? The crusty guys. It's good that you don't know any of that shit. Don't worry. You don't need to. 
Malpin and these Z losers, Hinkle Tinkle, Samira Khan went to Russia and met with a literal Nazi, Alexander Dugan. Yeah. Think about the only issue being the top of the hour ad break. Think about that. Now, you don't have to think about it as long as you subscribe. Thinking a white guy from Cali knows best about black liberation. <sighs> you think, I think you're talking about Bob Avakian, right? You're not talking about me. Anyway, here's the three minute ad break now. Santan Kishan, thank you for the five gifted uh, subs. Yeah, the rather right wing minded side of the communist community is a rabbit hole you don't want to go down. You cannot be a right wing communist, okay? It is ridiculous. Nationalism is poison. Nationalism is anti materialist. You cannot have a nationalistic framing while simultaneously advocating for anything that is inherently Marxist. Okay? That's it. Anyone that fucking eats the... the anyone that drinks from that Kool-Aid inevitably becomes more of a nationalist and infinitely less of a socialist. Okay? That's it. It is inherently oxymoronic. It is idiotic. It's like saying anarcho-capitalist, okay? These two values conflict with one another. Anarchism and capitalism are inherently contradictory values. Anarchism is the destruction of unjustifiable hierarchies, simply put. Capitalism is built on top of an unjustifiable hierarchy that ain't nobody fucking voted for democratically, okay? Communism is an economic system, though, so you could be socially right at the same time. It derives from Marxist principles, which at its heart are built on top of dialectical materialism. There is no materialism in nationalism. The only way that you can explain nationalism through materialism is as a mere distraction. I agree with you, but I really think we should push the Texas border back to Guatemala and just make Mexico a U.S. territories and label the cartel terrorists. That's so funny. Because, like, absolutely... First of all, this was discussed, I believe, in the, 18th, uh, in the 1800s. And the American government literally said, that would mean we'd have to live with Mexicans. And I don't want that. So, no. No fucking racist person would ever agree with you. Not even in principle. Also, it's incredible to just say that, like, we should make Mexico a U.S. territory. That's a wild thing. My man is, my man is literally maxing out on the fucking alpha dog colony mindset. Do you react to Thought Slime? If you don't, just say so. I won't link them anymore. If you do, here's a funny video on Caleb Malpin. Um, sometimes I react to Thought Slime. He's great. Uh, what did you say? Oh, liberation such as the Cuban Revolution, nationalism? Yes. Nationalism, once a state has been established, is very different than nationalism of the past as a liberatory movement. Nationalism can be a galvanizing factor in creating a state against a colonial occupation or against a dictatorship. It's very different than, like, Irish nationalism is very different than German nationalism. Do you understand? This is something that I have, yeah, nationalism of the oppressor versus nationalism of the oppressed is a fundamental, uh, uh, is a fundamental difference there that many people don't understand because they hear the term and understandably are, are grossed against it, grossed out against it for good reason. And then sometimes people weaponize that against like black nationalist movements. Not all black nationalist movements are the same, Right. There are some that are separatist or extremist and weird and reactionary, and then there are others who are not. A great example of this, thank you, Britonic, which is very prescient, very important to talk about now, is Israeli nationalism versus Palestinian nationalism. Shut up, ya k k, -k kubian Bro, you have a Putin is JD Pawn. Makes sense. First, these criticize him. All right, maybe Putin isn't JD Pawn. But he's our best shot at J.D. Pond. Yeah, dude. He's doing permanent first world genocide. That's why he's killing Ukrainians. <laughs> when I think of the developed world, 
When I think of the developed world, I'm thinking of like the greatest village you've ever seen with like a babushka living in it, okay? Inside of the mud, getting fucking lasered by a rocket. And I'm thinking, this is good. This is permanent first world genocide, okay? <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. The only way we liberate the global south is by genociding Eastern Europe. <laughs> like literally just dire conditions. People living basically in like developing nation conditions, okay? Inside of like one step elevated from a fucking mud hut. We should just keep killing those guys instead of, uh, yeah, that's how to do permanent first world genocide. <laughs> yeah, by this logic, unironically, it literally is like Hitler <laughs> looking at Hitler and being like, what are you talking about? Hitler's doing permanent first world genocide. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, he kind of did. <laughs> Hitler did more permanent first world genocide than fucking Putin is doing. Jesus Christ. You're out of your mind, dude. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, Jesus. Okay. All right. Uh, dude, this community is so funny. I don't understand the hay sometimes. All right, let's keep going. Putin also made his first public comments on the death of opposition leader Navalny, claiming he had agreed to a prisoner swap before Navalny's sudden death in the Arctic prison. <laughs> Before people fucking yell at me, I'm saying, like, the comparison between Putin and Hitler in this regard does not favor either party, okay? I'm saying that it's ridiculous to say that he's doing uh, a, a, a J.D. Pond-style uh, anti-imperialist action by killing a bunch, by lasering a bunch of fucking Ukrainian babushkas, okay? Некоторые коллеги сказали, и не сотрудники администрации, Некоторые там люди сказали, что <coughs> есть идея обменять господина Навального на некоторых людей, которые находятся в местах лишения свободы в западных странах. Вы можете мне поверить, можете нет. Человек, который со мной говорил, еще фразу не закончил. Я сказал, я согласен. Но, к сожалению, вот э, случилось то, что случилось. Yeah, unfortunately, what happened, happened. But there was only one condition. We would exchange him. But he wouldn't come back. Let him sit there. That is all. But it happens. There's nothing you can do about it. This can't be Putin. This must be a clone. Dude, another... Another incredible analog between Putin and Erdogan is the constant, like, he's dying memes. This happens literally in every country with like an authoritarian strongman that has existed in perpetuity. Actually, really interesting. I don't know if there's a Chinese version of this with Xi Jinping. I, I don't know. I I've never heard it from the netizens. Maybe they have a similar thing, but I think it's a more of a testament to his popularity in comparison to these guys' popularity. Russians have been saying, yeah, Putin has been cloned for like 10 years now. Russians have been saying Putin's been cloned and he's going to die for 10 fucking years. Same with Recep Tayyip Erdogan. Recep Tayyip Erdogan is on the, is on the edge of cancer. Okay. Recep Tayyip Erdogan is on the edge of cancer for as long as I have lived. Do you understand? This man, according to the Turkish people who are anti Erdogan, is always dying. Okay. He's going to die like tomorrow. He's going to die tomorrow. He's going to die tomorrow. It's just, I've given up. I've completely given up on that meme from, yeah, Oskar Dabi, birazdan, birazdan. Trust me, bro, bro, he's dying, bro. You don't understand, bro. It's hopium. I'm going to tell you right now, evil never dies, okay? Following breaking news just coming into CNN right now. Attorneys These are the clones. Educate yourself. Trump say they're unable, unable. <laughs> bro, by the way, I like that we have our own version of this where we do it with, uh, with with Joe Biden. It's just called a facelift. Well, not even a facelift, but like Botox. Okay. <laughs> this is called aging. For those of you who don't know, it's called aging. Gracefully, mind you. Okay? Gracefully. 
I think he's created an organic system that the Chinese people feel and know will exist beyond Xi, whereas r the Russian population knows uh, they are fucked. Yeah, after Putin, they are fucked. The Turkey-Russia situation is different. If those countries, there is a very real subconscious fear that when the strong man dies, everything will fall into a power of vacuum. I think China is different because there is general faith in the party structure outside of Xi. Yes, but I think in Turkey, there is also... I don't think Turkey is the same as Russia in the sense that, like, post Erdogan, Turkey fucking collapses. I don't think so. But post post Putin, Russia w is fucked. Like there is still a semblance of a real structure as a consequence of the parliamentary system, with which Erdogan obviously changed into a presidential one. But like, still, there is a parliament. There is a. Um, also, I don't know how further Turkey could collapse. The economy is in the dumps permanently. And Turkey's always been like relatively 50-50. That's why I always say Turkish elections are unfair, but they are still free. Whereas in Russia, the elections are both unfair and also not free, right? It sucks, but that is a major difference. Do you think socialists in Russia could seize the power vacuum and Putin bust the dust? No, dude. No. Like, post-Putin Russia is like, I'm talking Haiti-style, just like criminal elements. What is unfair versus not free? Unfair means like media, media blackouts, censorship, propaganda, things like that. Whereas like unfree would imply that like you're jailing or literally executing your opponents or also not allowing people to vote and, and uh, you know, like instilling fear in the minds of people that vote against you. In Turkey, it's unfair because of the things I just mentioned. A lot of censorship, uh, you know, a lot just like Recep Tayyip Erdogan literally fucking did a national broadcast day before the election that was aired on every single platform. Um, uh, he has also jailed some of the political opposition as well, but like, uh, there is still like a viable counter to him in the country that 50% of the country definitely still very much like rides for. Um, whereas, uh, what else, what else does Erdogan do? Oh, Erdogan also has like a very corrupt, permanently calcified, uh, institutional control where, um, like... That, that basically recycles or, or reignites uh, a, 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 genuine, uh, a, a genuine amount of, like, support through the party structure. Party stru like, being a part of the party offers you benefits. Being a part of the party offers you additional welfare. Being a part of the party offers you job opportunities, things of that nature. And when you control the country for, like, fucking, you know, 20, 30 years... That's how you reinforce that's how you reinforce your your real support. He has also many Turks in Germany who voted for him. Overrated impact. Yeah, I, I agree. That's just whatever. Turkey's press freedom according to RSF. Yeah, it's it's in the fucking dumpies, dude. Tur there's no fucking press freedom. Yeah. This is the future president of Russia. Ooh. Bro, the Synthol King himself, dude. One day. It's not Synthol that's natural. My arms look the same. Bro, I feel like he put Synthol in his cheeks, too. I don't know what the fuck he did. Is he natty? Yeah, as nat he's a natty baddie. Mhud thinks he actually did steroids and then didn't like work out enough, so then he just went the next route, which is synthol. I don't even know if he actually ever did steroids. Mhud believes it, so I believe it as well. Mhud follows this man religiously. He publicly did that in 2017. Oh, okay. You see, Mhud is never wrong. See Jamel Bowie's take on Dune. Dune is not a white savior narrative, and I need you to understand who's saying. Wait. Oh, I was like, what the fuck? I was like, that's not Jamel Bowie. What the <laughs> I you sent this to me because I was like, I've seen I've uh, I've seen this TikToker and I was like, that is not Jamel Bowie. What the fuck is going on? Did he like 
do some crazy like reverse aging thing or something like it shocked me for a second no 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 he's just doing a stitch friend of the show Jamel Bowie this is this is Jamel Bowie all right um where the fuck were we oh we were talking about pooty poo and then we okay we're moving on from pooty poo to uh america's very own strongman authoritarian sexy ass leader and i'm not talking about joseph brandon if you know what i'm saying we're talking about donald trump broke boy donald trump if you're a broke boy just say so trump is unable to make a 464 million dollar bond in his civil fraud case and because he's broke that's it he is not buying the the pokemon cookies okay anytime soon able to get a bond to pay the 464 million dollar fraud judgment calling it and i'm quoting now a practical impossibility <laughs> cns kara scanell is joining us from new york right now kara what can you tell us uh Trump should get his money up and not his funny up. He's been doing, he's been getting his funny up too much. Walk us through what this means. So Trump's lawyers have informed the appeals court pee. today that they are unable to get anybody, an insurance company, an underwriter, to help them post this bond, the $454 million for Trump alone, the rest to cover his sons. And what they say is that they've approached 30 of insurance underwriters, some of these big, gigantic companies that you know, and they say that none of them are willing to do it. As you said, they're calling it a practical impossibility. You know, one of the reasons that they say is an issue here is that some of these insurance companies have internal limits that they won't issue a bond for more than $100 million. And some of the biggest names that you can think of in the insurance world also will not underwrite a bond and take property, which is what Trump has to put up. They want cash. They want security, stocks, bonds, some Thing that is what's a liquid, easy to sell asset. They don't want property. And so that is the problem that Trump has run into in trying to come up with this massive amount of money, half a billion dollars. You know, these bond companies, too, they also want uh, their own. Uh, I guess you could call it, a, you know, insurance on it. They want extra money than just what the bond is so that they can, you know, cover this as it as it plays out. This bond is to uh, stop the New York Attorney General's office from seizing the property while the appeal of the judgment and the case goes forward. So they've been asking the, uh, the Trump's team has been asking the appeals court to allow them to not have to post this bond um, until the appeal is over. They're saying that Trump has properties that are worth more than the judgment in this case. Uh, it's just something that the insurance companies won't take. So they're saying that the attorney general's team um, should, will be able to collect uh, on this judgment if it stands. And they could do so by seizing some of the properties, which the attorney general's office said they're ready to do. But they're still asking the appeals court here for more time. And that's why we're seeing this new information come out today, saying they're unable to post the bond of this magnitude. They can't get anyone to underwrite it because it is just a, a, a large amount and particularly a large amount for one individual. Well. So, Kara, what comes next in this process? So now it is before the appeals court. There's been briefing on this. It's up to this New York State appeals court to decide whether to allow Trump to move forward with the appeal and stop the attorney general's office from seizing properties to give them this time to, to have the court case play out. If the court says that Trump... Um, does not get this stay, Trump's side is asking them to allow them to put their ruling on hold so they can appeal to... People saying Elon's going to bail him out with what money, dog? With what money? How's Elon going to bail him out? Elon should bail himself out first. What's he, what's he got? You think he's got $464 million just laying around? They're having a broke off, dude. Wait, so Trump did need a GoFundMe? Yes. Yeah, this is part of the new merch that I'm wearing, yes to the highest appeals court in New York State. That, those will be decisions for the New York appeals court to decide. And of course, the New York Attorney General's office like has- People saying Elon has billions of Tesla stock. Okay, you think he's gonna sell Tesla stock? Like that's insane. Or you think at, at the current interest rates that exist, Elon is going to leverage his Tesla stock to get a fucking, to get a, a, a loan that is half a billion dollars to bail 
Donald Trump out? That is insane. Buying a president is one thing, but I feel like, you know, a little difficult to do here. Pose this. They want the appeals court to allow them to enforce the in judgment now if Trump cannot post that bond. Well, all right, Kara, we'll stay in close touch with you. We'll see what happens. A significant develop, of development indeed. Renato, let's start with you because you've represented it, you've represented rather, and prosecuted large real estate developers before. What happens if they can't get a bond? Oh, if they can't get a bond, uh, collection efforts go forward, which, uh, first of all, can be expensive. Okay, it's a there's a court process where uh, the the New York Attorney General is going to be trying to collect that judgment. Could potentially put liens on properties, uh, in, in you know, essentially entering that order into uh, uh, various other proceedings. For <laughs> and in the when they put liens on the properties, they are definitely not using the Trump valuations on the properties. <laughs> Come on, I don't get it. Just put a lien on fucking Mar-a-Lago. You know what I mean? That's worth like what ten billion dollars according to Donald Trump. <laughs> for example, so. That would potentially be an issue for Trump. Uh, he doesn't, if he's already got uh, his real estate highly encumbered with loans and so on, having to deal with collection efforts and pay attorneys to fight off collection efforts is yet another problem that he doesn't want to have to deal with. And his attorneys say that uh, he approached 30 underwriters to back the bond. Does that make sense to you that they would all say no? Well, in my experience, um, real estate developers tend to be very highly illiquid. They tend to be highly leveraged. They tend to have all sorts of loans. They, you know, they might have a revolving line of credit. They may have uh, various loans and personal guarantees out there. Um, however, uh, what I will say is that you know this is not a complete surprise to Donald Trump. It's not like the New York Attorney General's case happened over the course of minutes. It happened over the course of years. Uh, and Trump could anticipate a potential judgment. And the fact that he hasn't prepared by refinancing and making selling properties and so on suggests that he may be less wealthy than he has portrayed himself to be. Oh, on that note, thank you for um, teeing up Kristen Holmes, who covers the Trump campaign for us. Kristen. If you're a broke boy, just say so. <laughs> you uh, know very well that a big part of Donald Trump's identity is how wealthy he is. And the idea that he can't pay this money, I mean, it wouldn't be out of this uh, world for you or I or most normal people not to pay half a billion dollars and not to have that lying around in our bank account. But it might be different when it comes to how Donald Trump thinks he's perceived. Yeah, and Dan, I just want to start- Who do you support, Biden or Trump, RFK, baby? by saying that you should know that there are a lot of Trump allies who watch your show and they've been texting me with the argument- RFK- Jesse the Body Ventura ticket. That's right. Jesse the Body Ventura is going to be the president after <laughs> after he's RFK's vice president. Of one, most billionaires are not liquid. This right. is not that surprising. The other, other argument saying this is about the insurance companies. This insane amount, this is their words, not mine, in terms of the bond, these insurance companies can't get that much money, that much collateral. So there is an argument here among Trump world. But as you know, Donald Trump himself has painted himself, his entire image, not just politically, but also before that, his brand on being a billionaire. And that is why this case was so personal for him in the first place, was the idea that that everything he had built was essentially on a lie, was it was fraudulent, that he wasn't really this rich, that he had inflated those numbers. That's why you saw him so fascinated and so intent on being part of this case, sitting in that courtroom, listening to these various witnesses, because it is to his personal brand. It also goes to his political brand. This idea that I built myself up as a billionaire and I could do that for you too, goes away if you can't afford to pay this kind of money. And let me just go back to Renato on this, because you did mention uh, that most real estate developers are not liquid. They can't just write a half a billion dollar check. I think that is probably true for most billionaires. Damn, dude, they're just flexing on him. They are currently flexing on Donald Trump. They're calling him a broke bitch, dude. Chill. That's fucked up. Though I don't certainly have that experience to really know firsthand. Uh, but 
if they have assets, the question is, you kind of said maybe if he prepared, he would start to sell things off. I mean, is that a, a real possibility that he might have to do that? We'll just say that in other circumstances, other matters that I've handled, uh, that is what's happened. Essentially, uh, real estate developers refinance properties, sell properties, do what they have to do to get cash. Now, uh, candidly, I've never been in a case where a real estate developer needed uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions. It's only been in the tens of millions, uh, but nonetheless, for those real estate developers, it was a very significant ask, right, to come up with that mm -hmm. kind of money if you have hundred, well, if your net worth is in the hundreds of millions. And so, but for Donald Trump, nonetheless, he could have anticipated this and sold a property in the midst of the New York Attorney General's proceeding. And I really would say one of two things is true here: either he doesn't have the wealth that he suggests he has, or he didn't plan whatsoever. Uh, you know, was so blind to what was occurring that he essentially left himself at a position where now uh, he's going to incur significant costs and hassle and and a disruption to his business that was unnecessary. All right, short time ago in the White House. Well, 10 million bond is a small bean developer. All right, yeah, he's, he's a broke boy. He's been a broke boy. He needs to get his money up. He needs to not get his money up, but he's been getting his money up too hard. All right, Peter Dushi pressed the White House on Biden's flashes of anger which I love. Fox News went so quickly on the defensive, okay? For months and months, they've been obviously running the understandable narrative that Biden is losing it. He's demented, he's old, he's senile, he's fragile. Sleepy Joe Biden. It's correct. A lot of Americans agree with Fox News on this issue, okay? However, since the SODU, State of the Union, Brandon has been a little bit more dynamic, and I have to tell you that as an objective arbiter of news, okay, of truth and democracy. So in the interest of doing my journalistic due diligence, I will tell you, I will tell you the truth. Joe Biden has been definitely more dynamic since the State of the Union. He has started campaigning, okay? They put him on that liquid cocaine crack cocaine whatever the fuck they're putting them on but that shit's been working now now having said that so what do the republicans do they fucking tuck their tail and they show their belly like a submissive little puppy okay immediately they turn on the defensive and they start crying about how angry he is he's such an angry president and i'm a i'm a widow baby and i'm crying about how angry he is take a look house briefing our peter Ducey asked jake sullivan the national security advisor about reports that president biden because of the fact that he is facing some opposition from his own voters in many battleground states has flashes of anger over his sagging poll numbers those are the exact date of the first day you streamed or you're senile easy 25th of March 2018. Also, you're ridiculous if you don't think that Biden is senile. You also have eaten the propaganda from um, liberal mainstream media, making it seem like Biden actually was totally clear and coherent on that uh, on that Robert Herr deposition. He was not. You just read the headlines from mainstream media and the false framing presented by mainstream media and immediately ran with that narrative. Okay? He didn't. He wasn't clear or coherent in it. We looked through the actual fucking statements. And losing voters. Listen to this exchange. The report that when President Biden was told his handling of the war between Israel and Hamas was starting to affect his poll numbers, uh, the quote is, he began to shout and swear. So when he does that, is he shouting and swearing about Netanyahu or about Hamas or about his poll numbers? This is the when did you stop beating your spouse question because I don't think he ever did that. <laughs> um, and Excuse so, me? well, you, you use that as the premise of your question, which is when he does that. He, I've never seen him do that, shout or swear in response to that. So from my perspective, um, that uh, particular report is not correct. Hey, Sean Hannity here. <laughs> 
He's so dynamic, though. We're gonna behind turn closed down. doors. Vladimir Putin reelected. Trump calls January 6th defendants hostages and gets a rebuke from Michael Pence, who is fake. So there's also a separate drama. Hey, I'm sorry for being annoying. I understand why you tie me out. I love you in this community, and I hope you don't hate me. I just have really stressful weeks in front of me because I have to give two presentations, and that gives me a lot of anxiety. Happy to be a part of the community. Sheltered Rosebud is back. I only gave him an hour off. Can't wait to give them a week off. Three hours from now, when I'm finally done covering politics, and they come back in to be like, uh, I can't believe you're done covering politics. This is really fucked up. Anyway, um, as I was saying, so Donald Trump over the weekend had some statements and some of those statements were incendiary as always. And others were taken out of context. Mainstream media came after our boy specifically and the Brandon camp take, uh, came after our boy specifically when Trump said, if I don't get reelected, it will be a bloodbath. Okay. Now, they were quick to jump on that and go, oh my God, he's talking about fucking, uh, you know, murder on the streets. It's an understandable fear that people might have considering January 6th when he didn't win. However, turns out our big, beautiful boy got clip chimped. And I'm going to tell you exactly how in a moment. Let's take a look. Uh, to the latest on our presidential race, the presumptive Republican nominee, former President Donald Trump, is taking heat for the language he used at a rally in Ohio over the weekend where he lashed out at migrants and defended January 6 criminals. Ed O'Keefe has more now from the White House for us. Ed, Donald Trump's former vice president says he will not endorse him. We are on, in unusual territory here, to say the least. What is going on? That's right, Tony. We sure are. Mike Pence says his differences with Donald Trump aren't over style or language. Pence argues his former boss is walking away from conservative principles like fiscal responsibility and opposition to abortion. So he can't back him. I've come to the conclusion that I, uh, I, I won't be endorsing Donald Trump this year. A forceful rebuke from Donald Trump. Boo! Traitor! You have no constituency. No one cares. You suck. You abandoned our president in the, in the moment that he needed you the most. You're a fake friend. You're a phony. We don't like you. Donald Trump's one-time vice president, Mike Pence. The reason why I, I won't endorse Donald Trump this year is because I see him departing uh, from the mainstream conservative agenda. Beyond policies, the two have clashed over the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. On Saturday, Trump kicked off an Ohio rally with support for the January 6th defendants. Can you see the spirit from the hostages? And that's what they are, as hostages. On Sunday, some members of... Yeah, he called the J6ers hostages, which I think is awesome. He's an abolitionist, okay? That is my abolitionist king. Our prison's obsolete. Folks, let me tell you. We must focus on rehabilitative justice because justice is what love looks like in public. That's right. That's right. Folks, release the hostages. He's a prison abolitionist only for white people? Yes of his own party criticized Trump's promise to pardon those convicted for actions at the Capitol. We're a nation of laws, and those folks were convicted. Many times they pled guilty. Uh, if you plead guilty, i.e., obviously you are not a patriot. Trump went on to stoke fear about criminals coming across the southern border. Well, I don't know if you call them people. In some cases, they're not people, in my opinion. And speaking about the auto industry and cars manufactured abroad, he said... We're going to put a 100% tariff on every single car that comes across the... Look at this fucking dildo. Line, ...and you're not going to be able to sell those cars. If I get elected, 
Now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole. That's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath. The Biden campaign criticized. Immediately, immediately they seized on it. They clip chimped him and they fucking, they seized on it. And they were like, wow, he's saying there's going to be a bloodbath. To be fair, under other circumstances, Trump has basically likened, uh, you know, he uses spicy language for sure. And he, he, and do I believe that he's not like memeing on what will happen if he doesn't get elected as, as far as like political violence? Certainly. But this, but this isn't one of those instances. What the fuck? Hold on. It's Trump's use of the word bloodbath saying he was doubling down on threats of political violence. The Trump campaign hit back saying the comment was taken out of context. As for President Biden, he celebrated St. Patrick's Day here at the White House yesterday while also celebrating a record $53 million fundraising total in February. This week, he's headed west for stops in the battleground states of Nevada and Arizona, which he won in 2020, will be critical in November. He'll also be making some stops in Texas to raise money. Tony? Yeah. November itself will be critical. Ed, thank you very much. Republicans find themselves answering questions about one man and one man only, Donald Trump. The Sunday shows were filled with questions about two eye-catching comments Trump made last night. In one, Trump said migrants are not people. And in the other, he painted a dark future for the country if he does not win. We're going to put a 100 percent tariff on every single car that comes across the line. And you're not going to be able to sell those cars if I get elected. Now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a blood. I just had a... <laughs> Sorry, I just had someone randomly come to my house for ho house cleaning. And I was like, this is not the right house. <laughs> um, they, they're at the wrong house. Never mind. Uh, that's what. No, no, no. It wasn't a solicitor. No, they, they showed me the address. It was the wrong address. Wrong door. It was the CIA. Yeah, dude, the CIA is a is a tiny... Uh, Latina abuelita, okay? <laughs> the CIA has many different methods. <laughs> it's certainly not a five foot one <laughs> tiny little lady. She's an asset. The CIA is woke now. Yeah, she's a trained assassin. Um,. Kim Jong-un gets Turkish ice cream? Wait, what the fuck? No, that's not actually Kim Jong-un. Shut the fuck up. Uh, where was I? Oh, so we were talking about the bloodbath thing. Do I believe personally, do I believe personally that um, Donald Trump and his supporters might do another fucking January 6th? Maybe, right? It's not unlikely. But he's not fucking talking about that here. He's saying, like, it's going to be a bloodbath for you economically, okay? It's obvious. The actual spicy language that he utilizes is not even spicy. It's just straight Nazi language that he utilizes when talking about undocumented immigrants and immigrants alike, where he basically fucking said in that same speech moments prior to this that, like, these guys aren't human, Okay. How the fuck do you not get mad at that, but you get mad at, like, the it's going to be a bloodbath if you don't fucking elect me? Because Democrats also are like, no, he's right on that. <laughs> like, he's going full fash saying they're not people. And the Democrats are like, I can't believe he said it's going to be a bloodbath if, we, if he's not elected, uh, you know, because of the EV tariffs. It's very frustrating. Okay, it's very, 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 very frustrating. I think a trade war with China is kind of spicy, if not dehumanizing. Well, wait, what? No, it's just. There's limits to what he can and can't do. Look at that dude at the rally behind Trump with the red tie, black coat and glasses. Is that the most insult looking motherfucker you've ever seen? Yes. He has the blockiest head I've ever done seen in my life, too. Beth, for the whole... That's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. Now, of course, we don't have to think about what could happen if Donald Trump doesn't get elected and the bloodbath that might ensue because he is going to get elected. <laughs> Unless the Democrats change course 
dramatically, okay, he already is going to get elected, so you don't have to worry about what happens when he doesn't, okay? You should start worrying about what happens when he does. Here to talk about that and much more, Democratic strategist Maria Cardona and Republican strategist Alice Stewart, both CNN political commentators and co-hosts of the podcast Hot Mics from Left to Right. Thank you for being with us. All right, Alice, I want to... Damn, bro, they get podcasts up there, but I'm not up there. Get the fuck out of here, CNN. Uh, Ryan Grimm and Aaron Rupar went to war over this clip. Oh, this is funny. So do I have the straight Trump said if he's not elected and we don't put tariffs on Chinese EVs, there will be a bloodbath in the auto industry. And that's reported as him saying there will be a general bloodbath. Headline writers, don't outsmart yourself. Just do Trump promises bloodbath if he doesn't win election. No, you don't have that right, but that's very on brand for you. So that's not what he said. I heard it in the clip. That's what it sounded like he said. I don't like Trump, but pretty sure Ryan got it right when, in what he said. Nope. When he says it'll be the least of it, he's referring to cars. The bloodbath of the whole country is not about cars. This is awesome. This is a perfect, this is a perfect rehashing of 2016. Trump says something purposely incendiary. Liberals don't just like focus on all the other incendiary shit that he said that's like directly tangible policies. Liberals jump the gun and say, see, he used the term bloodbath. He means like they're going to do J6 style bloodbath. Okay, this time it'll be J6, but J7 and J8. Okay, it'll be like October 7, but for America. And then Trump and his supporters go, oh, fake news. That's not what he was saying because it literally wasn't what he was saying in that situation. And the irony, of course, is that he has basically said, he has basically said that, you know, there will obviously be moments like uh, of political violence on numerous other occasions. So, like, liberals feel galvanized in defending that position. They feel like they, of course, he's going to fucking, uh, of course, he's going to do political violence. He's said it many, many times over, right? And then we, we consistently get, like, all those fucking moderates to be more polarized that were already, like, begging to fucking vote for Trump anyway. They were looking for any out. And uh, rehash the 2016 cycle over and over again. hyper focus on Donald Trump's incendiary statements in the wrong ways. Okay, hyper focus on Trump's incendiary statements, not the actual ones that are like tangible and and reflect his his policy uh, uh, outlook. Okay, and then we have a semantics conversation over and over again. No, nope, when he says that'll be the least of these, he's referring to cars. The bloodbath of the whole country is not about cars. I get why MAGA's and anti anti Trumpers are muddying the waters though. You can't be this stupid, so you must be lying. So you acknowledge that the first bloodbath was indeed a reference to the economic damage of the auto industry. Bloodbath is a common term for financial catastrophe. This obvious context when he talks about the rest of the country clearly shows he's claiming similar economic catastrophe will hit the whole country and the auto industry will collapse. It will be the least of it. Then he goes back to talking about the auto industry. Trump is a dangerous lunatic, but you're just flat out lying here or just dumber than I ever thought. Pathetic. Ryan, he's saying that if he loses, there will be a bloodbath and the auto industry will be the least of it. It doesn't take a genius to listen to the clip and figure that out, but I'll leave the tortured anti-anti-Trumpism to you. It's your specialty. It is impossible to listen to or like the notion that we have to have like a separate category for anti-anti-Trumpism is so dumb because Ryan is not pro-Trump. I am not pro-Trump. Ryan, in, in this instance especially so, is just simply pro-truth. You are saying... You don't want to say that. You don't want to say that like uh, you're you're actually reading the fucking statement. Okay, you're reading the statement as it's intended, uh, and and that is like because you you know don't want this to be weaponized by the trumpets. Okay, and immediately that's like, well, you must be a trumpet yourself, but we know that you're not a trumpet, so we'll just claim that you're anti anti Trump. It's very stupid. You can interpret it both ways. I agree with your point, but there's no truth. No, the point is Trump has already talked about political violence time and time again. Trump has also led to political violence. He literally talks about the January 6 prisoners that went to jail for doing an insurrection as hostages. It is clear how he feels about political violence. He is on board with it. Okay. He's on board with political violence. You don't have to fucking manufacture an additional narrative off of something that he can very easily defend.
It is so stupid. It is so goddamn stupid. And to present people like Ryan, especially, as like anti-anti-Trump, as though they don't, uh, <laughs> as though they specifically hate, like as though they are the real centrists here, is idiotic. What, at, what did Asmongold say? Yeah, exactly. It's the, it's the Asmongold quote about, you know, people making up shit about me. If what I say is so bad, why make up shit? Except in this circumstance, Trump does say, does say a lot of bad shit. So you don't have to fucking look that far. And then have the media narrative be driven by, did he or did he not mean that there is going to be political violence? Especially when there will be political violence and he will definitely say that there should be political violence down the line anyway. That's why it's so stupid. It doesn't make any sense. It is impossible to listen to that or read it and think he meant anything other than financial bloodbath. You think by lying like this, you're helping Biden, but the irony is that you are the one here, not me, that is actually giving Trump a boost. I 100% agree with this, by the way. You're further discrediting legitimate criticism of him and insulting the intelligence of people who can watch the clip themselves and speak the English language. You are helping Trump and hurting Biden, the very opposite of your intent. Yeah. Oh my God, I can't even fucking type beautiful. The liberal hysterics and cope with their finest. Biden is cooked and they're grasping, gas, grasping blindly in the dark for anything. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, hey guys, Donald Trump actually did use Hitlerian language in that, in that conversation, in that speech. My favorite Aaron tweet of as of late. Fair warning right now that I'm going to have no fucks to give this election cycle. The choice between democracy and authoritarianism, sanity and insanity. I'm going to call out anybody who obscures that very clear and vital distinction. It's all on the line. Yeah, he's, dude, Aaron is going to make you wear the latex cuck suit, okay? This time, tonight is different. He's not wearing the latex suit. You are. You better not come after our boy, Brandon or democracy. I love Aaron. He's great. This variety article is pretty wild. More than 450 Jewish creatives, executives, and Hollywood professionals have signed an open letter denouncing Jonathan Glazer's zone of interest Oscar speech. Nice, guys. Huh. Good stuff. Let's see. Deborah Messing, Tova Feldsha, executives Gary Barber, Gail Berman, Amy Pascal, creators. Amy Sherman Palladino, directors Eli Roth, Rod Lurie, producers Lawrence Bender, Hawk Cock. What the fuck? Hawk Cock? That's crazy. Sherry Lansing and representatives UTS Jake Fenton, Gersh's Jeffrey Greenberg, attorney Craig Emanuel. That was a man, a real, the real hoi polloi, high society, real, real big names out here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> producers you've never heard of except for <laughs> the ones that happen to be bankrolling some of these movies they are really mad at Jonathan Glazer okay <laughs> the jabroni league yeah a real who's who of annoying libs Eli Roth is the only fucking name I recognize uh, the group statement says we refute our Jewishness being hijacked for the purpose of drawing a moral equivalence of be between a Nazi regime that sought to exterminate a race of people and an Israeli nation that seeks to avert its own extermination. Glazer declined to comment with such high profile co-signees as Jennifer uh, Jason Lee, La La Land producer Gary Gilbert and the America's creators Joe Fields and Joe uh, Weis Weisberg. The statement adds the use of words like occupation to describe an indigenous Jewish people. Blech. Blech. You should be embarrassed. You should be embarrassed to put your name on a fucking dumbass thing like this. Yeah. <laughs> Israel needs to defend itself <laughs> by killing Palestinian children. Jonathan Glazier, please stop saying that that is not a good defense of Israel. Killing Palestinian children is exactly how we're going to defend ourselves, and we must defend ourselves. Okay. The Lala producer guy was the one who helped screen the October 7 footage here. Eli Roth was the bear Jew in Inglorious Bastards. Yeah, that that Eli Roth is the one that makes me a little sad. Like I hate that. It's really fucking annoying. 
The use of words like occupation describe an indigenous Jewish people defending a homeland that dates back thousands of years and has been recognized as a state by the United Nations distorts history. It gives credence to the modern blood libel that fuels a growing anti-Jewish hatred around the world in the United States and in Hollywood. Bro, they're saying it's blood libel. They're saying it's blood libel to say that like Israel should stop killing Palestinian children. No, blood libel is, is a, a concept made up okay, to justify atrocities committed against Jewish people. You cannot say it is blood libel when Israel, as a nation state, has killed a shit ton of children, okay? That is crazy. You are undermining the severity of this accusation. You are undermining the very real hate crime of anti-Semitism by comparing it to something that is really happening, okay? It is so shocking. Blood libel also refers to a specific myth. It pisses me off so much when they try to make it uh, mean criticism of Israel. Yeah. Blood libel, for those of you who don't know, is the, the fucking antiquated now, except, you know, rehash regularly, antiquated... Uh, uh, conspiracy that like jews eat children okay they kill babies they eat the blood of babies they kill children and it was utilized to basically justify pogroms it was it was it is a historical record okay it is a matter of historic record this is exactly what uh, uh the the uh like early anti-semites did in order and claimed in order to uh, in order to justify pogroms okay yeah, they kill Christians to use their blood in a ritual. That's where the blood libel comes from. Please stop comparing, like, a made-up conspiracy that is very damaging and has been historically damaging and has been used as a justification to kill Jews with the Israeli state totally separate from Judaism. Absolutely, okay? No matter how hard Zionists try to fucking marry the two, the Israeli state actually killing children it's so stupid they're bullying our boy critical defense for jonathan glazier our big beautiful boy the goat okay it's completely fucking ridiculous rapaport watch we don't acknowledge the UN, then I guess you don't acknowledge Israel either, as Israel is created by UN Resolution 181, and Israel's own Declaration of Independence refers to the UN seven times. Have you watched Zone of Interest yet? Yes, I have still, uh, no, I have still yet to watch it. The missive comes in response to Director Jonathan Glazier's controversial acceptance speech at the, uh, at the Oscars. You already know what that is. I covered it a lot, okay? Um, where he said that... Uh, Right now, we stand here as men who refute their Jewishness and the Holocaust being hijacked by an occupation which has led to conflict for so many innocent people, whether the victims of October, whether the victims of October the 7th in Israel, or the ongoing attack in Gaza, all the victims of this dehumanization, how do we resist? After Glazier spoke, he received applause at the Dolby Theater, some of enthusiastic from Poor Thing star Mark Ruffalo, Kaya, place. You're going to hurt your little elbows if you lay on the ground like that. Good place, Kaya. Damn, this guy's good.